So I got my shower pretty much waterproof. Okay, a bit of a change uh, this week. Uh, I was actually very lucky to have Jamie Kaskai of Meadowlark Tile uh, make an installation video for me. Uh, her service area is North Dakota. Um, and as I just said, Meadowlark Tile. Uh, Jamie is going to show us how she installs a uh, Schluter shower with a large format tile and a large, uh, pretty large um, glass mortar and also a, you know pebble shower floor with a pebble scribe going over the curb and onto the main bathroom floor it's a pretty neat uh, installation and she actually shows us how she does that so anyway uh, I'm gonna leave all of Jamie's information in the description below she's an NTC member a new NTC member she is working on her uh, CTI certified tile installer and uh, so She's a great installer, very qualified in what she does. Uh, she do, attends as many train uh, like me. I, I go to as many trainings as I can. Shluda, Mape, you know, whatever I can, I can attend, I attend. Uh, I actually went to a, uh, a tech uh, demonstration this morning. So when I can go to those things, I do. And Jamie is the same way because it's important to be qualified and to know the products and to understand how they work and then to install them according to manufacturers uh, recommendations and Jamie's just going to show us how she does that with the Schluter products in this shower uh, great install uh, she takes us through all the details so hope you enjoyed this video uh, I'll leave all of Jamie's information in the description below where you can contact her if you're in North Dakota and you need a great tile installer Jamie's the um, the person uh, that can help you out so anyway uh, let's get right to it. Let Jamie do her thing and show us how she installs this uh, nice, beautiful shower. Just one last quick note. Uh, she introduces herself as Jamie Martin and I introduced her as Jamie Kaskai. I'm not going crazy. She just got married. So there's a change of name. That's why there was a change of name. So anyway, let's get to it. Hi, my name is Jamie Martin and I own Metal Earth Tile in Dickinson, North Dakota. And I'm going to be doing some work in this home. I have four floors to do, four backsplashes, and the master bathroom. I'm going to be tiling that shower. So the first thing I'm going to do is waterproof it. And then I'm going to lay a mud floor and then I'm going to start my tile. So let's take a look at what we got here. This is a brand new construction home. I'm eventually going to be putting Dietra on the floors. This is the master shower. I'm going to be mudding the floor. This is a giant niche that's going to go here. We have a bench. And I'm going to be waterproofing with my favorite product, which is Schluter. So, why don't we get started and I'll show you how I waterproof my showers. It's important when you start your shower to make sure all the walls are plumb and square. Schluter approves of a wet shimming method. In this case, my walls were pretty plumb and square, but if you needed to, you could use a mortar to bring the walls out and make them plumb and square. Once they are dry, then you can apply the approved screws. Something that I've learned is how to work with my drywallers. As you can see on the left hand side, I have my curdy board meeting up with the drywall. I have hung that curdy board prior to installing the shower so that my drywaller can put his corner on there. That way I can put waterproofing over his corner and everything will look seamless. It seems to work out very well for the both of us. So 
So normally when I am going to put up a board here with the mixing valves and the shower heads, I'll just sometimes take the board, bring it in here, bang on it, see if it'll leave me a mark on the back to cut. But I think because these are so flimsy, I'm just going to go ahead and measure them and then put on my board where I need to put those two valve holes and then I will cut them and then I will start to hang up this board. I'm not going to waste my time making a perfect circle just because I'm going to put mix mixing valves covers over here that Schluter gives me. Okay, for this I am going to bang on this one. I'm going to continue to put my screws up. So I'm going to cut the board for this bench niche area and I have some Schluter niches I'm going to combine and make this big niche and this unfortunately was framed in with some plywood so I'm going to go ahead and put curdy board over it. Band it all up so that way it's 100% waterproof. Same with the curb. I did tell the contractor not to put a curb in. I'm going to build one out of foam. So we're going to go ahead and get these boards cut. And as soon as all the boards are up, then we start banding and waterproofing all of our seams and screws. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so normally I would finish putting up my curdy board, put my niche in, top of the bench, but I am actually waiting on my Schluter shipment. I, it usually takes me about a week to get all my products way out here in the middle of nowhere, so um, that is supposed to be being delivered at my home today. So I'm waiting for my niches, my drain, my curdy band, so I'm going to improvise today and start my banding by using strips of curdy membrane that I'm just going to make my own patches and strips for now just so I can keep the day going. Alright, I'm going to start putting up my banding now and I've got Carabond, which is an unmodified mortar which is required for a shooter. So you can use all set too, but I just happen to have Carabond on me so that's what's going up today. When applying your curdy banding over corners, you want to make sure you have a 2 inch overlap using a quarter by 3 16 trowel or a curdy trowel which they sell. 
you want to make sure that you get a nice seam on the corners. I like to use a six inch taping knife and then push out all the air pockets. by 20 shooter niches to fit into this area that I will be making one big niche and I'm going to finish putting up my waterproof board and band it all and make it waterproof. shim out a little bit because when he framed it it just wasn't plumb so there is actually some shims behind this board and of course I just beat it a little bit because it is foam so now I have a nice flat surface So I got my shower pretty much waterproof, as you can see. Still have to get some valve covers on, but I have my niche all waterproofed and banded, and my bench, and my doorway. So now what I'm going to do is I am actually going to put curdy fabric over the ceiling because I am going to tile this, this ceiling and I went ahead and primed it and I do this because I know you don't have to curdy it but um, I like to offer my customers a lifetime guarantee on their showers so I like to be safe and go ahead and waterproof it so that I have peace of mind that I know that it is um, waterproof, nothing's going to happen down the road, hopefully. Okay, so normally I like to put my curdy sheets up in as big pieces as possible, but I know that the humidity in this house is extremely high, so if I leave sections of my thin set on the ceiling, it's going to dry out, and the curdy fabric is going to lose its bond. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up in a few different sheets and hopefully get it done as soon as possible, and I'm going to leave a two-inch overlap on each side here. So... That way I only have to put banding on the back wall here. Thank you. 
When applying your curdy membrane, make sure you push out all the air pockets. I like to use a dull 6 inch taping knife. That way you know you can get all the air pockets out without puncturing it. If you use a sharp one, you might have to have some holes to repair. Once you get it nice and flat, then you know have, you have a good surface to apply some tile. Okay, so here I've applied my tar paper to the bottom of the subfloor with staples and I have my galvanized steel about to go into the mud bed and I'm about ready to glue in the drain and make sure everything's level. Okay, so I've got that half of the shower all mudded up and I'm working on the perimeter on this back half. This back here is going to be the highest point, so I'm working my way back. And I am lifting the metal up a little bit so it's kind of sitting in the mud somewhere for support. So I'm going to keep doing this and we'll see how it looks when I'm all done. Alright, I am done mudding my floor. I've got everything sloped to the drain and I'm going to leave for the night and when I come back tomorrow I'm going to waterproof it. Okay so I have my shower all waterproofed and today I'm going to perform my 24 hour flood test. So let me show you what I have going on so far in this bathroom. I've got Deetra applied to the entire bathroom floor. Everything is waterproof. Unfortunately, Schroeder does not make a mixing valve seal for this size, so this is an approved shooter method to use fabric and then curdy fix. I have my drain plug in. I have Flood Test Freddy and his girlfriend and we are gonna fill this baby up with water and check it tomorrow and see how she did. All right guys, so we are in the middle of the installation process here. Main floor is installed and this is gonna be an exciting install because I'm gonna take the river pebble, scribe it up over the curb and then scribe it into the main tile on the floor here. So what I'm gonna to do today so I'm going to start installing my pebbles and it is going to be tedious because I do install my pebbles one by one and especially since I got this swirling pattern here so let's get at it. I like to install my pebbles one by one therefore I do not get any sheet lines and I can make it custom by doing a swirling pattern like in this shower. Word to the wise, peeling off pebbles on a sheet can be very tedious and kind of hurt your fingers. 
so I just like to set them on fire. So take a propane torch and hold it over a bucket and the pebbles will fall right off. Otherwise, I heard you can soak them in water, but I've had better luck with the fire. But if you want to do this, make sure that the burnt crispies on the back of the tile are peeled off because that can be a bond breaker. Okay, so I got my scribe all done. This tile is glued down, so I am gonna go ahead and grind it out. We'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm in the middle of my tile installation and I just wanted to add that I put a piece of Schluter Curdy fabric on the floor just for some final reinforcement for my pebbles. I figured why it wouldn't hurt. Okay, it's tile time. So what I've done here is figured out my layout. What I'm going to have is about a three quarters of a tile on the bottom and the top and it's going to flow nicely into the niche right through a grout line. So I've attached my string a level and I'm going to go ahead and set my first row and keep going. Normally I like to do my bottom row of tile at the end where I can scribe it in, especially during a pebble floor tile install or one that's severely sloped. For the floor format tile. And I'm using Caravan T, which is also for large format. And I've also used a hot glue gun to adhere my Schroeder profile to the wall. Industry standards require 95% coverage in a wet area. Always back butter your tiles. Pull a tile back occasionally to make sure you're getting proper coverage. If not, add more thin set. Always apply your thin set with a proper trowel size and notch in the same direction. Here I am using a Euro trowel, which is equivalent to a half inch. Looks like some pretty good coverage.
take a look inside the shower and see what I got going on. I am waiting for the shelves for the fabric from the fabricator to put in here so I've got it all framed out. When those come I will install them and finish the rest of the niche including this glass here. I have a few tiles up here to do. The doorway, I always do my bottom row last. And I just wanted to point out that any holes that I put in my wall, I, I did curry fix them. So also with my bench, nice and level and angled. Any water that is going to be in the niche, I'm also going to angle the shelves a little bit, will drip down to the bench and then obviously run off the bench as well. All of my corners are clear of mortar, including the ceiling, so they can be siliconed. Today I'm going to work on this here. It's going to be a pebble scribe over the curb. And the field tile will be to about right here. It's just going to be a little bit of a scribe, so we'll see how that goes. This is my first time doing that, so why don't we get started? All right, guys, I'm going to explain real quick what I'm doing here on this curb scribe. I've got my two pieces here that I know are going to be my field tile. I'm going to end up cutting this eventually. So I'll just have that off to the side. I've got these pieces here. This piece here is going to get cut. What I've done is I've taken two tiles, pebbles, and I have mitered them so that when they come together on the curb they'll be flush. So I'm going to put that one here and this one here and this one here. So what I've done is I've taken my sharpie and I've drawn out where I need to cut away at this one. So I'm going to go cut this and I'm going to mark all these because I, I know I'm going to misplace them. So. One thing I've learned during this process is that if you're going to use pebble scribing, make sure that you mark each pebble and use an arrow in which direction it's going to point. That way, if you misplace them or set them aside, you won't be lost in your scribing process. Right top. Call this one right bottom. Should look good. And then we'll put this one right front curb, which will be right there. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this scribed in. And I've got other ones that are 45 to continue along here. I'm going to keep going. Until I get to the next piece of curved tile, then I'll trace that to do this. My goal today is to get these ones done and the top and the pebbles in the front. Just set all that, let it sit dry overnight, and if I get that done today, I'll, I feel like I really got a lot accomplished because this is my first go at this and this is all trial and error. I have had some very good advice from some friends online. Um, you know who you are. So um, just go ahead and just going to kind of wing this and see how it goes. So um, if you stay tuned, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so what I got going on here is I've got these pieces put in. And I'm going to put in this piece here. I got my pebbles marked out. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to scribe that. And I also need to do a bunch more pebbles for along here, 45. So I'm just going to find a bunch that I think will work pretty good together. Like these ones. These ones look good. I guess the bigger the better. Um, 
We'll do all these. Take this, school scribe this, and I'm gonna show you what I did here on this piece here. I'm gonna tuck my rock under my profile so that nobody catches their feet on it. So I took my grinder and I grinded it right here. So let's go do those things. Okay, I've got my piece clamped here. So let's go at it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is get my best grinder blade. I'm gonna run a wet sponge against the back half of it while I'm cutting. It acts as like a little mini wet saw. Now that I got my piece scribed, I'm going to take my polishing pad on a low speed. It's just going to be a lot of finessing. So, as you can see, we'll just keep continuing along. Match up all these guys here. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, well I got some scribing done here on the pebbles here. Really certain that I like the way everything's laying out here where it's not going to catch anyone's feet. Fairly smooth. I'm hoping that this will look killer once it's grouted. 
Okay, I got some more scribing done. I like the way this all came together here. These all feel pretty flat and smooth. I've got my Schlitter pretty much where I want it. Now I'm gonna proceed to uh, put tiles up here and here, scribe that last one and continue on. In this scene, I'm using my variable speed Makita grinder. I have a 200 grit polishing pad on it. I just want to make all my edges really smooth. All right, hi everybody. It is grouting day, the shower's done, so we're gonna go ahead and get this whole thing grouted up today, and then we will be done. All right, it's really important that you clean out all your joints really good before you start grouting, which I've done with a toothbrush. And today I'm gonna to be using Hydramint Vivid by Bostic. Sets up pretty fast, but I really like this grout, so let's get started. All right, like I said, this Vivid sets up pretty damn fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and get what I can left Use that of this here, push it into these mosaics. Before I start grouting, I make sure that I clean out all my joints. I like to use a toothbrush or a denture brush to make sure that all the thin set is out of the joints. After that, I can begin grouting. But you want to make sure that all your joints are completely cleaned out, otherwise any thin set that peeps through might show through your grout. I also like to make sure that all of my corners and change of planes are cleaned out completely so that I can put my approved silicone sealant in there. I'm not going to put any grout in the corners or any change of plane. I'm going to put silicone in those. So if I get any grout in there, I'll scratch it off later. get one. This one's obviously had seen better days, but they work awesome. What you want to do is pretty much shape your grout joint, tool it. Okay, I would like to say that um, being on tile leaves has really helped me a lot with questions and method. And normally I would have some thin curdy boards to bring out my mosaics to match up with my field tile, but it was like three weeks out, customer didn't mind the way it looked, so I rolled with it. Um, I did read on Geeks that you can use Ditra, which I had on my trailer, which now I wish I would have done. So. Um, it just goes to show that you can learn.
many things online. And we shout out for all you fellow geeks that post those types of tips. All right, guys, I'm done with this bathroom pretty much. As you can see, Pebble Scribe turned out pretty nice. I'm waiting for the plumbers to install the freestanding tub. And I did put a sealant enhance on my pebble floor. I've got 100% silicone in all of my change of planes except for the pebble floor, which is something I don't usually do with silicone. So if they have issues in the future, they can call me up and I'll fix it for them. Got our nice niche with the quartz shelves. And you can see the back side of the scribe and that white Pebble is their cattle brand, so I'm on a ranch out here in North Dakota. So it was really important that I intra intricated their cattle brand somehow, and that was what I came up with. So thank you so much for watching, guys. There's my backsplash I got to do tomorrow and grout it up. Did the whole floor. Customer is extremely happy with the shower. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions about what I did. Or if you have any tips or advice or ways of doing things better, I'm totally open for suggestions. So hit me up. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.